some point, we will find ourselves in some unintended journey. Mm -hmm. And navigation of this is going to be hard. Mm -hmm. But I love that you listed out already a lot of different hurts or hurtful things or things that can feel hurtful because um, I hope listeners understand right away you're not alone. Yeah, right. This has happened and happening and will happen. Right. So then how do we navigate? Every bit of you is sacred by design. Welcome back to Sacred by Design. Kit. <laughs> kit, kit, kit. We all have dreams. We have dreams for our kids and expectations for our kids. But, oh, my gosh, rarely do things go the way we hoped and planned. Right. So today's podcast might be just for me. I'll just selfishly take it for me. Mm. But it is for mothers, women yeah. who have children, women who uh, care for the spiritual growth of children. And um, we want them to know that they are loved by God and by us. The topic is big, help for hurting parents, mm -hmm. but you have consolidated big help into eight beautiful principles. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Well, I hope it's helpful. I mean, it, it did come out of time with God in my own experience. Mm -hmm. And so I do hope that um, it's something that we can impart to people who are listening that will really be helpful. But I remember um, God saying to me when I was going through difficulties with my kids, because we all do, mm -hmm. that he said, I'm writing a story for them that mm -hmm. you wouldn't write. Oh. Right? Yeah. And, and, you know, and it, he said it in such, such tenderness. Um, but he said, you know, you would take out all the suffering and all the disappointment. And, you know, he's not going to do that because he uses life experience and difficulty and suffering for, for good, you know, and that's not making, that's not a Christian cliche. It's really true. Mm -hmm. Life is so hard and so difficult and, and raising children is so beautiful and so difficult. Mm -hmm. And God uses all of it for redemption, for growth, to draw us nearer to him. So, you know, there is no, um, we are not underestimating the pain and the difficulty of these experiences. Mm -hmm. And we're also not underestimating the hope and yes. the power yes. of God in these experiences. This is a both and it that is. you are it... very <laughs> well known for. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so there's lots of different kinds of pain that we experience. And, and we're not going to, you know, we're not going to cover all the different nuances, but, you know, we can talk about some generalities. But at some point in time, we have, as a mother, experienced pain in raising our children. Mm -hmm. And we want to understand how to walk through that. How do we invite God into that with us? So what kind of pain are we talking about? You know, here's here are just some circumstances that, you know, we, we would be familiar with that have happened mm -hmm. um, in our lives or in the lives of people we work with. Um, a child has rebelled against God and wants nothing to do with them. A child is in an abusive relationship and wants to stay in it, refuses help. A child has declared that they're gay and um, they want to live that lifestyle and that's something that's difficult for you for whatever reason. That's something that's really difficult for you. A child is sexually promiscuous. Um, a child suffers from deep anxiety. A child is addicted to pornography. You know, those are all things that we see. Um, and it's at some point, we will find ourselves in some unintended journey. Mm -hmm. And navigation of this is going to be hard. Mm -hmm. But I love that you listed out already a lot of different hurts or hurtful things or things that can feel hurtful, because um, I hope listeners understand right away you're not alone. Yeah, right. This has happened and happening and will happen. Right. So then how do we navigate? Right. Um, you organized eight principles for us. Yeah. So let's get started. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of interesting when I think about that, because I didn't sit down to say, let me come up with eight principles. It just kind of, as I thought about what God did when he met me mm -hmm. in some of these places or what he did with clients that I know, these are the things that kind of came to the surface. Okay. So I, I, I'm trusting there from him in some way, shape, or form, and so we can trust them. That's awesome. Yeah. So the first one um, is predictable. Mm. Um, that's always a helpful word, right? Especially <laughs> when we're dealing with all of the unknowns of of 
child raising, but there are some predictable stages that we can go through. And just knowing that it's normal, that mm-hmm. some of these things are normal can help. So Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, who has been a, just this expert in the stages of grief since 1960s, these are applicable to us as parents today. Often when we first learn of a, a situation, we, we have our first experience is shock. Mm-hmm. This can't be happening. My child's addicted to pornography. This cannot be happening. You know, and then there's denial. You know, we're just, we're, we, we're in shock. We can't believe it. We, we don't want it to be true. Then anger's next. Mm-hmm. You know, often we're just like, how can you be doing this, God? Anger at the culture, anger at God. You know, why are you doing this to my child? Um, and then bargaining. We plead, we bargain. Um, Lord, I'll do anything to make this different. Mm. Um, and we can drift, in, drift into depression. Um, finally, we may begin to feel some acceptance. Now, these things are also not linear. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't go boom, boom, boom. We mm-hmm. can go from anger to shock to d- denial to acceptance to anger, you know? Yeah. It's kind of more of a labyrinth than a linear thing. But the acceptance, we can, we aren't like, oh, everything's fine, everything's fine. But we might not feel as overwhelmed. Um, we may begin to feel like, okay, I believe God is in this with me. I believe I can take it a day at a time and move forward. It's a jumble. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's normal. So we're grieving Yeah, what we thought might be our reality in order to accept what is. Yeah. That's exactly right. I often say we, it's like we have to die to our vision of what, whether it's marriage or friendship or a child, we have to die to what we thought it was going to be in order to embrace what it really is, what, it, what the reality is. Oh. Yeah. It's powerful, but really hard. Yeah. Very much. <laughs> okay, so number two. <laughs> a parent's priority mm. is loving well. You know, I had this conversation with a client yesterday, and she's in so much pain over her son, and there's a lot of disappointment, a lot of anger, and a lot of love. Mm. And, you know, I just, you know, we just were reminded that, um, you can have anger. You can mm. have disappointment. And you can also um, look at that child with sincere sincerity in your eyes and say, I love you and nothing's ever going to change that. Mm. And there's real power in that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's power in Christ's love for us. And he loves us unconditionally. At the same time, he doesn't approve of things we do, but he doesn't separate from us. He wants the best for us. And he loves us, and he calls that forth in us. And we can do that with our kids. We can um, be accepting and discerning. So when a mom discovers that her 16-year-old daughter is sexting her boyfriend, um, she can start by saying, I love you. You are precious to me, and you matter. Um, This is not who you are. This will hurt you, um, and it's not best. So our words are important, but equally important is our tone. Mm. You know, can we have peace? Can we have care? Can we be sincere and warm as we, as we talk to them? I, I learned that the hard way. <laughs> um, but kids act out because there's something going on. There's something yeah. broken inside, and they need our love. They need our protection. They need boundaries. They need conversation. Mm-hmm. So how do we stay calm? And, of course, we don't stay calm in our own strength. We stay calm because we invite God in and ask him to help us really pay attention to what's going on. Do we need to get them to a therapist? Mm -hmm. We can't be that therapist. We can come alongside them. And God is such a role model as the perfect father. Exactly. I can't even begin to tell you how many times that comes up in me and my heart Mm -hmm. with my kids, but also in conversations with clients. Imagine God. As a perfect parent. Yeah. And he is to us. And he is. So he shows us how to be a perfect parent. Or 
how to try to be a perfect parent. <laughs> right. So trusting God is the foundation here. Well, it's vital. Yeah, it really is. So the most important thing you can do in your relationship with your child, especially when they're in trouble, is your own deepening intimacy with Christ. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And there are no shortcuts here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's this kind of love and peace is not possible apart from God. And the interesting thing is, I know I was, and I can imagine a lot of other moms that are listening, have been um, tempted to get distracted from our own journey when our kids are going through something. It's like, okay, well, I don't have time to be with God right now. I've got to deal with this crisis. And that's really... A, a really unfortunate thing that we fall into because the best thing is that we stay really close. Mm. And whatever that looks like, however that looks, like, you know, we've talked before about how do we stay close to God? There's not a, oh, it looks like A, B, and C. Right. Well, how do you stay close to God, Andrea? How do I stay close to God? Mm. And then just be aware that that's going to be really important mm -hmm. for you, vital for you to to stay close. Um. And as you do that, as you draw more near to God and invite him more deeply, not just invite him into your life, but even more deeply during these times, then he fills us with our, his spirit and we can pour that out to our child. You know, it really is a receiving mm -hmm. and then a pouring out. Mm -hmm. If we don't receive it, mm -hmm. we can't pour it out. The abiding. Yeah. 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 Wow. I feel like as moms, we can think of our kids as walking report cards. Mm. And if our kids aren't, quote unquote, doing well, then it is a reflection of us. Oh, yeah. But a real misstep then for us when our report card supposedly is not doing well is that we keep that from God yeah. when he wants all of it. Yeah. He And he is so attentive and so persistent and so that relationship with God is vital. So then that would lead naturally to prayer. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to get into prayer. The other thing I want to say that just came up for me though, that was so, I'm really glad you brought that up, that idea of um, kids being our report cards. And one of the things that does happen as we draw near to God, as our kids go through this, is this idea of differentiation, which is a psychological term. But what it really means is we get more in touch with our selfhood from God so that we can honor our child's selfhood in God. There's a differentiation of realizing that you are not the same person. They are not you, and they don't reflect on you, mm -hmm. and you're not them, and you don't, you know, like there is this separateness mm -hmm. that can be very healthy, and God wants it to be connected but separate. I'm so, I love that. I'm so yeah. glad you said that. Yeah, I'm glad you brought it up too, because I do think that is a, a temptation for all of us as moms you know, to, to, to forget that they yeah. have their life, you have your life and God's going to meet each one of you in your life. Yeah. And, and prayer is right there, mm -hmm. right? So we, we want to ask God that our prayers be more powerful than our words, you know, and, um, this was a long time ago. A mom was telling a bunch of us, you know, a mom of, I think she had four teens. <laughs> oh, which, which, I can feel her. <laughs> <laughs> and she sensed one day that God was saying to her, You put so much more stock in what you say than in what you pray. And so there really is just a beautiful, beautiful place of surrendering and praying um, that we forget. We, we really underestimate that power of prayer. Mm. Yeah. So it's also really important to say, I think, that when, when as we talk about prayer and this relationship with God, yeah. that it's not, it's not that we pray in order to fix. Yes. It's not that we pray right. in order to change. Right. It's we pray in order to reflect this beautiful, loving, gracious, mm -hmm. forgiving, attentive God. Yeah. That's why. And we trust God, you're good. Mm -hmm. God, you are light. God, you are with us. Your will be done. Not, we're not going to have a specific outcome because we don't know. We don't pray for the outcome. We pray for God to do his will, to come close. We don't pray for a specific result, mm -hmm. and which is hard but really important because mm -hmm. that can interfere. We're not willing to just trust God if we're willfully saying it, it needs to look like this. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, and again, you know, I'm sure that everybody who's listening is like, that is so much easier said than done. I know. We know. I know. <laughs> oh my gosh. One of the hardest things in the entire world. Dang it. Is yes. To trust our kids over to God. Yeah. Yeah. So as parents, um, we do want it fixed. Um, and we can also, um, get into what did I do wrong? Mm. It's my fault. Mm. I had that happened with a conversation yesterday. There are so many things that happen in a child's life we can't control. I'm all for own what's yours, mm. but don't own what's not yours. You know? Um, so we want to release ourselves. Mm -hmm. We want to have a healthy, holy look. Um, and ask God, you know, what in here? Because yeah, right, Psalm 139 says, search me, know my heart, test me, see if there's any offensive way. And that's a beautiful, beautiful prayer. So let it be a holy experience with God and ask him about it rather than a self-bashing experience. Mm -hmm. Trust that he's going to show you some things if they're there and how beautiful would that be? Because that might be a part of your conversation with your child as you go through this. Mm -hmm. um, but it won't be because you're you know, in an unhealthy way, loading yourself with guilt. So ask him to show, what do you want me to learn? What do you want me to know or understand? That's really good. Yeah. And then that willingness to own what is yours and then release what isn't. So there's a real openness that's necessary. Yeah. In a, in a situation where you don't know that you have the resources mm. to be open, you, you're, you're in some, some days you're, just putting one foot in front of the other and you don't know how you're going to how you're going to cope but as much as we can to release it to trust God with it and that goes into the next part the the sixth principle is surrender you know and we all need God. Our children need God. They need to trust that there's someone who loves them and will save them. And we're not God. Mm. You know, we're not, we're not going to be that for them. And we do not want to try. Um, and, you know, I think this whole idea of when we believe that there isn't anything that our children can do or say to earn our love, to lose our love, we can surrender them to God. We can say, I can be with them. I don't have to fix them. I can trust them. Um, so when we give our children to God, that, that, that detach and love thing comes into play. We give them over. And we take a step back, which for mothers is like, what do you mean st take a step back? But it's really important. Give, give our children to God and take a step back and trust God for them. I can be with them. I don't have to fix them. Yeah. And we can get in between God and our children if we're always trying to fix and rescue. And, you know, we need to trust that God really has things he's doing in and with them mm -hmm. that we are not a part of. Mm -hmm. We can pray for them and we can say, Lord, may your will be done. May nothing come in the way of what you want to do. But it's not us doing it or coming <laughs> up with what needs to be done even. Yeah. <laughs> right? Which is so hard. But I have really good plans and ideas and I'm so <laughs> creative. <laughs> right, right, right. But, I mean, I think about my own life. If I think about my mom in relation to me, me in relation to my daughters, there was a lot of hurt in my life. However, God has used it mm -hmm. through a lot of more hard things yeah. <laughs> to, to bring even more beauty that I could never imagine. So to, that gives me experience to know and understand yeah. that, okay, that hurts for you. Let's see where this journey takes us yeah. and step back. And it's back to that both and. And mm -hmm. there is no downplaying how much it hurts. 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 And there is hope. There's hope. There's hope. There's hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
That's a bonus principle. <laughs> that, that repetition right there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. When, uh, but also, when we are allowing our kids to see us yes. hold back. Yes. Or, or not yes. step in right away. Yes. They're seeing us trust God. That's significant, too. Absolutely. And, you know, that reminds me, too, of both of my children have said, Mom, Mom, you know, not out of, like, um, rejection, but out of they're trying, they were, they're trying to figure their life out for themselves at some point, mm -hmm. you know, as teenagers. And so when we can trust God, we're on, also tr on, honoring God, but honoring them in their journey by mm -hmm. stepping back. Mm -hmm. So that is good. Um, oh gosh, that modeling. Yeah. Of just then, without saying anything, I'm purposely not saying anything, uh, for them to step into their relationship with God, into their mm -hmm. journey more fully without mommy dictating. Mm -hmm. It's just hard. Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, so along with that, you know, one of is to talk about modeling, one of the things that we can do that's so important is our own self-care. Oh, yes. It's so important. Mm -hmm. You know, again, just like our relationship with God kind of goes out the window, so does our self-care, our soul care. And that is so important. We tend to, I did this so much, but, and I know other pe moms do too, we tend to neglect our own need. Mm -hmm. to support and nourish ourselves while we're, you know, paying attention to our children. And it's like that old adage about, you know, you're in an airplane and the oxygen comes yes. down. You always put it, <laughs> put it on yourself first, you yeah. know, it's true. So remember that, we, again, we, we want to um, take care of ourselves. We want to seek trusted friends to talk to. Mm -hmm. We want to get a coach or a counselor, mm -hmm. a therapist, a direct spiritual director. Um, we want to do things that bring us life mm -hmm. during this, you know, take good care of ourselves, get out in the woods, paint, mm -hmm. um, make sure that you're taking care of yourself because what you're going through is very, very hard mm -hmm. and you need time to take care of yourself. And God will show you, you know, I think he's so faithful if we say, Lord, help me pay attention to what gives me life mm -hmm. and then do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's not lighting a candle. And sitting, we're, we're saying, oh, like you're saying, go be. out and the, it can be, it can be but, but it, it can, can be, be kayaking, all, it can be kickboxing, exactly, it can be absolutely. all sorts of things. Yes. God wants you to feel that joy and that fun and that spark within yourself. And, and, it, and really, we, are, we all get release and joy in different things. Some yeah. of us are introverts, mm -hmm. some of us are extroverts, some of us love exercise, some of us hate it, you know, and it's just, it's like, what is unique mm -hmm. for you that you can lean into? It's not leaf blowing. <laughs> it's nope, not that not top on my list either <laughs> however that is my life right now <laughs> so and then the very last one which is um it's all the more it's more powerful to me all the time is live in the present moment And in some ways, it's a little inexplicable. I mean, there are ways to describe why it's so important, but there are ways it's inexplicable. But to live in the moment, what's true right now, what's true right here, mm -hmm. is so life-giving. We don't realize how much we are robbed of living in this present moment when we're always thinking about the past and the future. And so a wise friend once shared with me about this, and he said, God is fully alive in this present moment mm -hmm. and in eternity. And darkness, Satan's territories, are the past and the future. So whenever I, I've, God has helped me train myself. So whenever I hear myself going, well, if only, or what if, mm -hmm. I don't go there. I just don't go there. That's good. It's a signal to me. Mm -hmm. It's a big stop sign. No, it, it took me years. Yeah. And I'm, I'm probably about 95% there. Most of the time, yeah, yeah. there's a time when it, I, I get sucked in for sure, but it has been a dramatic. Mm -hmm. And help. what are those phrases again? What if, if, if only, mm -hmm. if only I had done this, if only we had done that, or what if 
he does this. What if she does that? Yeah, what if and if only. Those are the things that will really get you right into the darkness, yeah. right into that place of um, no hope and no receiving truth of what's true right now. So the, the antidote is, Lord, what's true right now? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's true right now? Okay. I feel like we could almost do an episode per <laughs> principle, and I took notes for myself. <laughs> I have homework. <laughs> this was a lot. But we hope this was helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And I do want to say a prayer just to comfort moms who are sitting here right now. I, I, I would not want them to rush back into their life um, without sitting for a moment and being prayed over and comforted because maybe there's a lot of pain that's come up. Maybe there's a lot of insecurity that's come up. So let me just say a moment, just so Lord, we just, we um, know that you are here for each and every mom who's listening. And we just pray, Lord, that they would know that you are near, that what you say is true that you will never leave us, you'll never forsake us, that you are goodness and you are light. And they can lean into you right this moment with their fear, with their pain, with their anxiety, with their sadness. Lord, thank you that you are here for each one of them in the unique way that they need you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Kit. This was... Powerful. Mm. Good. Thank you, Lord.